morning. Will you pray with me as we prepare to worship our Savior with the Lord's Supper? Father, we do come to you and we praise you for what you have done, what you have accomplished. Lord, just the, the words we have just sung that no power of hell, no scheme of man. Lord, we praise you that we can have eternal life. Lord, I pray that you would receive the glory due you as we worship you in the Lord's Supper. In uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul instructs the church in chapter 11 that whenever we participate in the Lord's Supper, we do it in memory of Jesus, in memory of what Jesus has accomplished. So in, be, in obedience to the scripture, we are going to take the Lord's Supper now. As we prepare, will you open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2? And before I get to chapter 2 of 1 Peter, I'm going to give you a few things from Scripture that are facts. In Genesis 1 and 2, Scripture tells us that God created everything. And God said everything he created was good. It was perfect. God created man in his image. We were created to be image bearers. There was a relationship, there was a fellowship relationship that was, was perfect. God coming down from heaven and in the garden with man. There was this unique relationship. The next fact I want to bring to your attention is in Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world and it ruined everything. What it ruined was the ability for us to be image bearers. Sin marred everything. The relationship that man enjoyed as normal in chapter 1 and chapter 2 was no longer normal. It was ruined. Sin ruined relationship between men. You see in the fourth chapter of Genesis, there, there's murder. Sin separated us from God. God created it perfect, and our sin ruined it. Those are the facts. Sin ruined everything. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, I want to just keep in mind what Jesus accomplished. And Peter records it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. For you were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. We know from Colossians chapter 1 that, that Jesus is the, the perfect image of the invisible God. Our only hope as sinners to be image bearers is found in our relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the, again, the perfect image of the invisible God. Dropping down to chapter 3, verse 18, for Christ also died for sin once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. This is a time of remembrance, a, a remembrance of what Christ accomplished. So as you spend some time with the, in preparation of receiving the, the cup and the juice, consider what Christ has accomplished. You will be receiving, the men are going to bring a little cup and a cracker. 
And, and this cup of juice is a reminder of, of Christ's blood that was shed at the cross, and the cracker is a reminder of his body that he freely gave up. Think about what he has accomplished. The, the Lord's Supper is a time for believers, for those who, who believe in Christ, who are waiting for Christ uh, in what he has accomplished in their relationship with the Lord. If you do not have a relationship with the Savior, we just ask that the cup would just pass you by, not to embarrass you. We're glad you're here. But this is a time for those that are proclaiming what Jesus Christ has accomplished. And at the same time, I would, I would encourage you, if you're here today and you're not taking the elements, you're, you're not taking the Lord's Supper because you don't believe, I would like you to think about this question. Why did Jesus Christ have to die on a cross to pay the penalty for your sin? for another person's sin. Why did Christ have to die for someone else's sin? Will you think about that? If you would like help understanding, find me, find any one of the elders. But I, I would love for you, if you're not participating, just to wrestle with that. Why would somebody have to die for my sin? Why would Christ have to die for my sin? Men, come serve us. And we will take communion on our own, so please take communion when you're ready, and I will come back up and close our time in prayer.